The gentleman's time has expired. The chair now recognizes the gentlewoman from Oregon, Ms. Bonamici, for five minutes. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman and ranking member. Thank you uh, for being here, Administrator Nelson. Nice to see you. Welcome back to the committee. Um, I, I thank you also for focusing your testimony on the many ways that NASA benefits America. And one of those examples in your testimony is NASA's climate and earth science research, which we know is so essential to you know the, the health of the planet, really strengthening resilience in our communities and ecosystems. Those NASA satellites are so critical with the, giving researchers the data they need to monitor and uh, forecast extreme weather events, climate events. Um, and we know the, the um, data also provides uh, wonderful educational opportunities to inspire the next uh, generation of scientists and engage them, engage the public. And also thank you for the uh, new Earth Information Center at your headquarters here in Washington, D.C., helping with that critical piece of uh, science, improving science communication. So you stated in your testimony that much of what we know about our changing planet is rooted in NASA's more than 40 years of Earth observations. Uh, and the suite of satellite resources supports that Earth science mission and the scientific community by providing a, an access of a you know, variety of measurement data, air quality, emissions, ocean chemistry, surface biology, just to name a few. And I'm especially excited about the contributions of the recently launched PACE uh, satellite, Plankton Aerosol Cloud Ocean Ecosystem PACE um, satellite, um, to improve understanding of ocean health. So NASA's budget for fiscal year 2025 proposes to restructure the Earth Science Observatory program by breaking missions into smaller elements. So I wonder how did NASA arrive at this new strategy and what effects could this change have on NASA's long-term Earth measurements and climate research? Our strategy is to understand <laughs> very specifically exactly what is happening to our Earth and its climate. Uh, we have about two dozen uh, spacecraft up there now that are bringing us various pieces of technical information. And we are pulling this together in a composite 3D understanding precisely what is happening. You mentioned one that was more recently, the PACE. PACE is able to look at plankton and we're able to trace it in the ocean like we've never been. Uh, the A in there is aerosols, mm -hmm. which clearly has an effect upon our climate. Uh, we had another one, EMIT. Uh, this is a spacecraft. Uh, it was supposed to just look at dust storms and how that was affecting the climate. Lo and behold, we got a big byproduct from it. It could identify methane emissions, very specific emissions, so that we could go and try to stop those, or in the case that it might be an industry, the industry might even not know that it had methane Emission. Uh, and, and Mr. Administrator, I want to get another question. I, I certainly don't question the value of the program. I just want to watch how the change in the in the budget um, in, in this new strategy will affect it. So you also talk about the work that NASA is doing to decarbonize the aviation industry and aeronautics research programs like the Sustainable Flight National Partnership supports projects to increase uh, aircraft fuel efficiency, for example, uh, and invest in electrified propulsion research could significantly reduce uh, aircraft greenhouse gas emissions. So consume Considering numerous delays and cost overruns, what steps is NASA taking to see these projects through to completion, and how can Congress support that work that NASA is doing on sustainable aviation? Well, we have a serious uh, project that we invested upwards of $600, $700 million in a joint project with Boeing on producing a mid-range single-aisle uh, transport aircraft that will reduce fuel consumption by 30 percent. That project is underway, and that will be substantial. You take, uh, uh, like the Boeing 737, is the most heavily trafficked commercial airliner. If you can save 30 percent of fuel by a different design of the wing, a high wing that's long and thin, uh, and therefore being high can support 
hire a, a bigger uh, fan jets. Uh, you can get 30% combination between the engine and the wing. Uh, that's a substantial effort. Sure. We started on electric aircraft, but that's been overtaken by industry. So uh, you're, you're going to see a, a lot of uh, industry coming out with uh, electric-powered uh, aircraft. Uh, all of this is to do exactly what the goal is that you stated very eloquently, and that is the word is sustainable. I call it save energy in flying. Terrific. My time has expired. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.